Uh, hello everyone and welcome again to another episode of On Track Whiteboard series. My name is David Morakshi, a Senior Technical Marketing Engineer with Altium and today I would like to go over a cool technology, printed electronics, and some of its application and design challenges. Uh, the core driver of this market has been conductive inks. Uh, it's, which is really has been adapting to the different market trends. It somehow remained relevant by managing to find or create new uses through the all-inclusive term of printed electronics. That's why the term printed electronics has been loosely used to cover very thin devices and circuits. This is because many of these technologies and their applications overlap with many steps in common. So printed electronics is technically referred to the method enabling the printing and a variety of substrates in order to create electronic devices, which makes printed electronics rather a process and therefore is subject to the selected printing methods that manages the process of depositing material ink on a substrate to create, for example, active or uh, passive devices such as capacitors, uh, thin film transistors, etc. It meant to be a low cost in terms of processing with potential fault automation using existing technologies such as inkjet, uh, screen printing, gravure, and other similar technologies. It also meant to be used on a low-cost substrate such as plastics, papers, fabric, etc. Printed electronics is definitely a fast-growing technology and proven to be invaluable across all industries, uh, including healthcare, automotive, consumer electronics, and aerospace. Uh, really tremendous progress has been made in the printed electronics technology as designers now have options with clear advantages to develop certain applications. Uh, some e tools also now have the option to develop a layer stack specifically for printed electronics, which comes with its own set of challenges. Uh, since PE have become secure, flexible, and cost-effective, they have become appealing to many industries with the potential to reduce costs, technical constraints typically associated with mass-producing electronics, and we can sum their benefits as follow. It meant to be definitely a low cost uh, because they, lose, uh, they use less material and less energy to work with. They offer flexible form factor. Uh, they are easy to produce. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, you can use uh, existing technologies such as inkjet, uh, and they're easy to integrate as well. And they definitely open a new front on non-conventional functional electronic devices, such as flexible displays, active clothing, smart labels, and much, much more. So given the market potential of PEs, many suppliers are trying to ensure that first mover advantage by offering a wide area of products, which actually have led to a very diverse PE industry, if you will. Uh, some of the applications, just to mention few, uh, in-mold electronics, uh, IME, which we'll cover in a little bit more in depth, wearables, given the printing ability in fabrics, uh, smart packaging, uh, flexible heaters, which are now uh, used, for example, in car seats, uh, touch panels, uh, photovoltaic for solar, for example, transparent conductive films, stretchable conductive inks, LED lighting, uh, biomedical sensors, and of course, PCB printing, which can dramatically speed up the prototype phase, and many others. So I wanted to uh, focus a bit more on the in-mold electronics. Uh, because it seems to be one of the most promising application areas. IMEs uh, integrate flexible circuits and electronic components into a three-dimensional molded plastics. This allows designers to print circuit directly into a plastic substrate and that enables them to integrate touch control, lightning and antennas in applications such as refrigerators, washers and automotive consoles. Uh, the clear advantage of IMEs is that it eliminates the need of bulky, heavy, complex multi-layers assemblies and can be as thin as two millimeters. IME has been making a lot of progress with new system of conductive and dielectric inks that are designed to survive the intense, the intense stretching and heat of thermal forming and injection molding process. Uh, the market has definitely shifted from prototypes to proven volume production and reliability. IME offers the construction of ergonomically friendly control surfaces uh, with embedded 3D circuits that can include LED lightning and capacitive switches. It makes them perfect for touch panel control applications, as the one, for example, in an automobile. And that's due to their lighter material and faster assembly process, which in turn lower the overcost production. We can sum the overall benefits as follow. Uh, it's definitely 70% lighter, as some of the studies shows, because you don't have those 
uh, bulky assemblies. And uh, they are 30% cheaper to produce because you can use wide available technology such as an inkjet. Uh, their part assembly takes less time because you don't have this multi-layer uh, parts that you need to assemble. So some studies show that they can be reduced by 40% in terms of timing. And it offers freedom of design. Imagine uh, the things that designers can do. Literally, their imagination is the limit. So how are they processed? Uh, well, functional and graphical printing are often carried out on a 2D flat substrate, which is then formed and molded into a 3D shape. Uh, if I take, for example, this uh, mouse here, uh, imagine this is my 3D shape, and I'm designing my circuits in a typical 2D uh, CAD, ECAD editor, and after I'm done with my uh, my design, it gets printed on a plastic substrate, which then gets molded into the 3D shape uh, with all the touch control. Uh, if I have a scroll, for example, or whatever, it will be just on the top, very light, very easy to do. But some of the challenges uh, with this is the need to survive the thermoforming. And accounting, for example, angles and odd shapes, the traces will be molded into. Uh, for this example, it's a very simple shape, but imagine something that is very curvy with odd angles. Uh, since the, there is a stretching uh, effect, if you will, to the traces when they move from a 2D to a 3D uh, mold. So while printed electronics provide clear advantages for many applications, uh, they still face new challenges as many companies actually are going through some trial and error to experiment with the new methods. And uh, for PCB designers, the challenge, of course, is from a PCB tool as there are unique requirements for the PE layer stack, uh, special design rules, and MCAT integration. So given the processes are new, there are challenges related to the tools used to make the printed electronic circuits. Uh, in terms of tools, how do you integrate an MCAD to ECAD uh, as you move from a 2D design to a 3D process? Uh, how do you ensure that your product will survive to the end the thermoforming simulation? And the same thing if you need to be able to do thermoplastic strain simulation uh, to ensure that the 2D circuits will fit the 3D mold. And uh, in regard to ECAD tools, well, uh, some of the obvious ones, design rules. As, uh, as I have in this example here, this is a typical PCB uh, layout. You have the top layer and you have the bottom layer. So this is not a problem for a typical PCB because the layer are isolated. Uh, this is not a short or anything. But for an IME, this point here actually shorts because it's a, a layerless design concept, if you will. And you need to have a tool that understand the rules that this is actually a short. And on top of that, the layer is actually, the layer order is swapped. Uh, the top layer becomes actually layer two because it's the one that becomes on the bottom. And the bottom layer becomes the one on the top. So uh, crossover like these needs to be resolved and uh, that's gonna be a part of the tool that needs to add the dielectric crossover, for example. So the ability, for example, to also route in 3D uh, if uh, possible, because you can have a three mold design, you can uh, either bring in a step file or however you do that with your current tool and be able to route the 3D on that, on that 3D mold or uh, uh, whatever the 3D design that you have. Uh, how to set up global dielectric stack? Uh, because like I mentioned, it's a layerless uh, stack and it needs to be treated differently than a typical PCB. And of course, the challenge of having access to the wide material library selection. Uh, the different vendors offer uh, many different uh, uh, materials that meet different uh, wide design requirements. For example, there are some that are good with adhesiveness, some that are better with conductivity, uh, different type of dielectric. There are some uh, applications that needs for the ink to be stretched. So that's another issue that can face in terms of uh, PCB design, selecting the right uh, material uh, from a, a wide library that might be available or not. So that's a wrap for us. And again, uh, if you found this episode helpful, like it, share it, subscribe to our channel so you never miss out on future episodes. And we'd love to hear your comments. And thank you for watching.